Hey guys, today we're going to learn about the division properties of exponents. We're first going to learn about the quotient of powers. That means like if I had two powers and I was dividing them, like, I don't know, x to the third divided by x to the fifth. I'll show you how we can do that pretty easily. And then we'll do a power of a quotient. That means that starting with a quotient, it could be a fraction, like, I don't know, two-thirds. And I'm going to take that to a power like uh, to the fifth power. We could have to do it with variables. It could be x squared over y. That's a quotient, yeah, just a division, a fraction. And I could take that to the, I don't know, fourth power. I could even take it to the negative fourth power. That's exciting. And uh, this is section 7-4 in your book. And you can look there if you um, need extra help. All right, so first we're going to simplify quotient of powers. And the first thing we're going to do to see if we can discover what the shortcut is, is to go ahead and just expand out what we see. So we've got x to the fifth over x to the third power. So if I expand that out, I get x times x times x times x times x all over x times x times x. Now, we know that we can not really cancel out, but we can divide out. So x divided by x is 1, so that divides out. Here, let me do that in a different color. x divided by x is 1, so that divides out. x divided by x is 1, so that divides out. x divided by x is 1, so that divides out. And we're just left with two x's in our denominator, x times x, which gives us x squared. What I want you to see, do you see a relationship between the exponents that we started with? 5, 3, and what we were left with, 2. Keep that in mind and see if we can see a pattern emerging. All right, so I've got 8x to the 4th over 6x. So I've got 8 times x times x times x times x all over 6 times x. Well, let's see what we can, how we can simplify or divide out. I'll change colors here. All right, so... Um, x divides out with x. Oh, I can simplify 8 over 6. Just think of it as a fraction, 8 over 6. So I know that 2 goes into both of them. So this can become a 4, and that will become a 3, because I divide those both by 2. And I'm left with 4x to the third power over 3. Well, we know how to simplify this, but what I'm looking for, I'm interested in the exponents. So let's see, what were my exponents of my bases? I had x to the fourth and x to the, remember, there's nothing that you better put a 1 on it, x to the first power. Is there a relationship between 4, 1, and 3? Hopefully you noticed that I subtract 5, mi five minus 3 gives my numerator minus my denominator. 4 minus 1 gives me 3. Let's see if this still holds true. Here we go. I've got um, x to the third divided by x to the fifth. x times x times x all over x times x times x times x times x. Right, let's, let's see what divides out. All right, x divided by x is 1. x divided by x is 1. x divided by x is 1. Now what's left up top? There's nothing there, but you know there's a really a 1 there. So what I'm left with is 1 over x to the second power. That's nice. Let's see what happened if we used our the shortcut that I think is happening now. I said it's the numerator, the, the exponent of the numerator minus the exponent of the denominator when they have the same base. We can only do this when they have the same base. So let's see. So I should say x to the third power minus x to the fifth power is x to the I don't know, what is 3 minus 5? Hmm, x to the negative 2 power. Wait a second, is, that such, is there such a thing? Yeah, there's such a thing. That's not simplified. Remember, get to ride here. So, same as 1 over x to the second power. Hey, check it out. That's what we got. That's what we got. All we had to do was subtract the numerator exponent minus the denominator exponent, and we got our answer. Let's see if that holds true for our last example. I have, let's see, x 
times x times x times x times y times y all over x times x times x times y y y y all right this crosses this divides out this divides out this divides out that divides out that divides out and I'm left with x over y squared. Hmm. Let's see. Now, I said that when I'm dealing with my same bases, I'm going to talk about my x's now. Okay? My answer should be 4 minus 3. I should be left with x to the first power. Okay? Now we're talking about my y's. Okay? should be 2 minus 4, so I'm left with y to the 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Now, we know how to simplify that because y's got a ticket to ride. Y's got a negative exponent. So x is happy. It's going to stay on top. Y is going to the denominator. Y to the second power. Check it out. That's what I got, whether I expanded it or shortcut. So when dividing powers with the same base, okay, it only works when they have the same what happens to the exponents? The exponent is the difference, which is the word that we use as the result of subtraction, of the numerator exponent and the denominator exponent. You might be able to write that in an interesting way. Okay. It's the top exponent minus the bottom exponent when it's, we're talking about the same base. All right. So here's our rule, quotient of, or quotient of powers. If I have some variable to the m power divided by that same variable, same base, whether that base is a fraction or a product, I don't really care. It's got to be the same base n power is going to have the same value when I simplify it as x to the m minus n power. Okay. So you try these next three. Pause me and come back when you're finished. Now we're going to simplify a power of a quotient. Here we go. Let's see what pattern we come up with. This will be 3 fourths times 3 fourths times 3 fourths. And I'm going to end up with, on top of an exponential, um, express it exponentially, it's 3 to the third power. And on the bottom, I've got 4 to the third power. Now, if I were to actually work this out, it, I would end up with 27 over. 64. But what I want you to see is that it's just my exponent applied to my numerator over my exponent applied to my denominator. Let's see if it works out for the next one. I have x squared over y times x squared over y times x squared over y. This whole thing is going to end up being x squared cubed over y cubed. Now, you know I'll keep on using my rules when I simplify it and go all the way. But what I want you to see is that it's really just my numerator raised to that exponent all over my denominator raised to that same exponent. Okay? x squared to the third power over y to the third power. Now, I get to use my power to a power rule on top, and I'll get x, remember the power to a power, 2 times 3 is 6. If you expanded it out, you'd see that also, over y to the third power. Here we go. Wow, 2xy cubed over yz, oh, I made a really long one here, times 2xy cubed over yz, times 2xy cubed over yz times 2xy cubed over yz. All right. 
this is um it's hard to tell my twos from my z's sorry okay so that's really the same thing if i kind of rearranged it as 2xy cubed to the fourth power i'm multiplying right across over y z to the fourth power it's just my numerator to the fourth power over my denominator to the fourth power let's go ahead and work that whole thing out using the laws that we know um, i'm going to actually erase this work so i have some space 2xy cubed to the fourth power all over yz to the fourth power. Looks like on top I've got power of a product, so I'm going to use my power of a product rule. So that's going to be, this is going to become, remember, each of these, there's three factors here. This times, my last factor is y cubed. y cubed to the fourth. All right, let's keep on going. Oh, I've got a power to a power. Love those. Love those. So I'm going to rewrite this as I'm going to, 2 to the 4th is 16. x to the 4th, y to the power to a power. Multiply, and that's a fact. y to the 12th, all over y to the 4th z to the fourth. Woo! Now I'm going to see if I can simplify because I can't have the same base on top and bottom. That means there's something I can do here. So I looks like I've got y base and a y base there. So that one I've got to simplify. y to the twelfth divided by y to the fourth is going to be y to the eighth. Okay, that'll stay on top. It's positive. So here I've got 16x to the 4th, y to the 8th, because 12 minus 4 is 8, all over z to the 4th power. Well, it's kind of confusing. But I just used rule after rule after rule after rule. I kept on going as long as there was another rule to use. And what's cool about exponent rules is the order doesn't really matter. It will always turn out the same. So what happens when raising a quotient to a power? What happens to the exponents? We raise the numerator and the denominator to that exponent. Power of a quotient, this is the actual rule. We're going to use this power of a quotient rule when my base is a fraction or a quotient. I mean, those are the same thing, okay? So when I get to use my power of a quotient rule, I don't care what that numerator denominator looks like, how complicated it is. As long as it's a quotient, it means I can use it. Go. So if I have, I don't know, x over y, I guess, to a particular power, n. When I simplify it, it's the same thing as if I had x to the n power over y to the n power. That's it. That n could be a negative number, too. We'll get into that in class tomorrow. So you try these next three. See what happens. Pause me and then come back when you're done. And the last thing we're going to do is just to refresh our memory, practice some of the things that we did in the past, make sure it's, our mind is still working well. And um, that's about it. So I'll see you in class. Great job today.